first step in assembling the rover is making the chassis. One of the first things we need to do is take this piece of C-channel, this aluminum piece of C-channel, and the tailwheel support and screw them together with two 256 screws. We put the heads on the top and the nuts on the bottom. Then we're also going to take this C bracket and this L bracket, screw them together along with the battery holder with two 256 screws as well. Note that the screw heads are on this side and the nuts are on the inside. Also note that the L bracket has a short side, which is this, and a long side, which is this, and the long side we want coming out this way. Also notice that on all of these brackets, they have the same hole pattern so that things can be put together. The hole pattern that you see on these parts will be the same that you see on all of the other aluminum parts as well. Next, we're going to take those two parts and put them together with two 256 screws, which are going to come up through the bottom here and screw into two small 256 plastic standoffs. Make sure that you get the small plastic standoff because there are larger ones in the kit. Now we're going to attach these L brackets to the chassis that we've already built using two more screws and then to those we're going to attach the servo brackets. Note the orientation on the L brackets the short leg is here and the long part is here and that the screws are on this side and the nuts are on the opposite two sides. We're going to put one on each side and notice their orientation with the tail so that there's one hole showing here with the tail up. And lastly, for this step, we're going to attach the electronics carrier with two screws into the plastic standoffs that we attached in the last section. And to that, we're going to put four one inch plastic standoffs to complete this portion of the assembly. Now we'll attach the servo and wheels to our robot. The servos that we're going to use are the continuous rotation servos and they're the 3142 CRs. Make sure that you use these. They're the ones with the gold bands around it. Um, these are different servos because these servos actually spin all the way around 360 degrees. So these are actually going to be the drive motors for our robot. Most servos only spin about 170 to 180 degrees. That's what makes these servos special. The first thing we need to do is use four screws with washers on the front and nuts on the back to hold our servos in place on the servo brackets. Also note the orientation of the servo horn. This is the part that comes with it. There's a screw that comes in there also. I've already removed it for this step. You do this on both sides and make sure you use all four screws. Next, we're going to take the plastic wheels and put a rubber band around them. The rubber band is for traction. These wheels come with extra rubber bands, so you only need to put one on. I've already taken this screw out slightly. We're going to remove the servo horn, and if you notice, there is a spline inside that servo horn. We're going to replace the servo horn with one of our wheels. Note that the spline should match the servo. Rotate it and it's a press fit. Press fit it on and then put the screw that you just removed back in and tighten it with a screwdriver. And then you're going to want to do the same with the other side. And we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to 
put those screws all the way back in. Next, we need to take the metal rod that holds the tail wheel and bend it in this direction 15 to 30 degrees so that it turns better. To do that, I'm going to use this vise. You can also use two pair of pliers. And I'm just going to put it in my vise and bend it by about 15 to 30 degrees so that it looks like this. To install the tail wheel, we're going to put the tail wheel on the shaft and so that there's a little bit of room so that it turns freely, we're going to put this collar on the end of the wheel and tighten it with the Allen wrench. Then we're going to put another collar about an inch down and a collar on top of that using an Allen wrench to tighten those two as well. With these two collars, we can adjust the height of our wheel so that our robot sits straight. Next, we're going to complete the wiring for the switches. And our robot is going to require two switches. The kit comes with three. Note that you do not want to use the one with the plug. The one that's in my hand now with the plug, we don't want to use. We want to use the two. One has a battery connector on it. The other has a 9-volt battery connector on it. And looking at a robot, with all three wheels on the ground, when the switches are up, the robot is on. And the way we make sure that we put the switches in correctly is if you notice, there's an empty leg on both switches. If you mount them in the robot with the empty leg towards the top of the robot, up will be on, down will be off. To install the SSC32, we're going to use four quarter inch socket head cap screws and bolt it into place with the serial port towards the back. Next thing we have to do is make sure that we put the power connectors in the proper places. Note that the big fat wires go into the VS port, red towards the positive, black on the negative, and make sure that there aren't any wire strands sticking out to cause a short circuit. That would cause the board to be broken or would also cause a short circuit heating up the battery. And the skinny wires go into the VL port, again, with the black wire going to minus and the red wire going to positive making sure that there aren't any wires sticking out. Before you stick the wires in, make sure that you loosen that screw all the way, push the wire in, and then tighten it down. And do that for all four. You have to open up the hole before you can stick the wire in. Since we're going to use the 9 volt battery to power the board and the 6 volt battery to power the servos, we also need to remove the VL equal VS jumper, which is this one right here. We remove that jumper and now the 9 volts will power, 9 volt battery will power the electronics on the board and the bigger 6 volt battery will power all of the servos that you plug into this. A couple more things on the SSC32. These two sets of jumpers that say baud change the baud rate or the rate at which it communicates. Make sure that you have the jumpers in the proper configuration for what it is you're trying to do. The board comes with both jumpers installed like that. That's one setting. And then by moving these jumpers, removing one or removing the other or removing both, you end up with different baud rates or different rates of communication. And depending on what you're doing with it, you're going to have to change that. The next thing we have to do is install the servos. And the servo on the left is going to get plugged into pins 0, and the one on the right is going to get plugged into terminal 1. Remember, we can control 32 different servos with this. Just remember, if you take a look on the board, 
it's labeled. The inside pin is labeled pulse. The middle pin is labeled VS1, which is power, and the outside pin is labeled ground. The black pin, the black wire, always goes to the outside of the board so that when we plug it in, this is my left motor, I'm going to plug it into, in this case, pin zero. Make sure that as you're wiring this, you follow the directions because if these are plugged into the wrong pins, your robot won't work correctly. And this is the right side motor, the black wire to the outside, and I'm going to plug that into pin one. There are two ways you can communicate with the SSC32 with your computer. One is with a serial cable, and another one, another way, is with a Bluetooth B. The Bluetooth B that comes with the kit plugs into the carrier board. Note that when you look at this, the angles here match the angles drawn on the board. It plugs into the carrier board, and then the carrier board plugs into the serial port on the back, like so. Also note that you have to power the Bluetooth B. To do that, there are two pins on the bottom. The pin closest to the port is positive. So I'm going to attach two wires, a positive and a negative, to those two pins, plug it in, and then I'm going to power it from my SSC32. And if you take a look carefully on the board, across from pins A and B, there's a plus sign and a minus sign. Plus is positive, minus is negative. So I'm going to plug my positive wire into the plus and the minus wire into the minus, like so. Now what we have to do is clean up all the wiring and install the batteries. To clean up the wiring, we use zip ties and make sure that all the wires are nice and neat. Uh, it keeps them from getting caught on things as the rover drives around. And make sure you clip off the tails on the zip ties and be very careful not to clip the wires. When you use just the SSC32, you have to make sure that you have used both batteries. This big battery powers the servos, and this 9-volt battery powers the SSC32 itself. When using the BOP Arduino, we're going to plug the servos into pins 3 and 4, which are over here. And when plugging the servos into this board, always have the black wire on the outside, as shown, as you can see here. Also, this jumper right here has to be moved over from the 5 volt side to the VS side in order for this to work correctly. And for power, make sure that you have the smaller wires going into VL red going into the positive one, black going into the negative, and the two larger wires going to the VS, red being positive, black being negative as well. Also, make sure that you remove the jumper if you're going to use both batteries from the VS equals VL jumper, which is right there. Remove the jumper if you're using the 9-volt battery. If you don't want to use the 9-volt battery and you want to power everything with the 6-volt battery, put that jumper back on. I'm going to use the 9 volt battery so I've taken the jumper off. The batteries install the large one goes underneath like so. The 9 volt battery goes in here. It's ready to go.